everybody. My name is Samara, and I am a representative of the McEachran and Theodore lines of Trinidad and Tobago. Now, some of you may know me as your local meteorologist, and when I'm on television, this is how I sound. However, when I'm in the kitchen with my mummy, this is how I sound. <laughs> Today, I am here to talk about this idea about the evolving identity of a first-generation American. It truly is a lifestyle, and it is so intricately woven into the complex threads of our mixed society that it's easy to overlook. Our identity does not stand at a point of origin, nor does it sit at any particular destination, but rather it flows in this transitory and evolutionary phase that resides kind of in between. Now, the struggle comes into play when we are trying to balance between two different cultures. Let's talk about culture for a moment. It is a beautiful aspect of this life. It's an explosion of dance and music and food, religion, ideology, tradition. And it's so cool because it works as a connector of sorts. It's almost like no matter where you go in the world, if someone has that similar cultural background, you have the premise to, or the ground, to start a conversation, initiate a relationship, or even a friendship. And culture is merely a device used to create unity. It's great because we can adapt to new cultures, or we can see the beauty in it being theirs. But again, the complexity arises when you find yourself trying to pa balance between two distinct cultures. It's interesting to see how many first gens uh, are thoroughly perplexed by their identity and how many are not confused at all. So I took it upon myself to reach out to a few of my friends. And in no way, shape, or form is this a formal statistical analysis. But I wanted to ask them a loaded question. And they know why it's loaded, because you know the feeling you get when you're asked this question. And I told them there's no right or wrong answer. But if someone were to truthfully ask you, what are you, how would you reply? The first group, group one, they completely embraced their parents' heritage. They said, I'm a Trinidadian. Oh, I'm Jamaican. I'm Guyanese. I'm Bayesian. Then you had group two who integrated both. I'm Caribbean American. I'm Jamaican American. Some went even as far to say, I was born in America, but my parents, they felt a need to include that because that culture had impacted how they identified. Then there were those who said, I'm purely American. And finally, the group that I can attest to have fallen in cat time and time again, I don't really know. It's complicated. One person even said, uh, what did they say? They said, that depends on who's asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> so you see there, the, the most intriguing reply, I think, was from two siblings. Grew up in the same house, same parents, and one said, oh, I'm Trinidadian, and the other one said, I'm American. There was no right or wrong answer, but what it did was it highlighted and amplified the forever transient scene lived by a first-gen American. Now, we share traditions that are not widely represented outside of the home, therefore, we miss that chance at unity. But that gap is growing smaller and smaller thanks to the liaison of social media. My relationship with social media. Okay, so some days it's like, peace, love, no technology. And then other days it's like, that macaroni and cheese is a bomb.com, I have to post that on my Instagram. So it was one of those days where the macaroni and cheese was life changing. So I posted it on my Instagram feed and I'm perusing through my timeline and I come across this meme. Okay, so now I know that this can affect many cultures or reach many cultures, even artists. This hit home so hard, immediately, my first reaction was to screenshot it, send it to my roommate from boarding school, who I knew had parents from Guyana, and I didn't have to send a caption. I knew she would know the feeling that was resonating within me of humor. So I distinctly remember my father in the kitchen while I was doing my homework as a child, sharpening my pencils with knives or in the grooves of scissors. To me, it was resourceful, it was normal, and it felt like home. Now, as I would go to bed, I'd put away my homework and I'd wake up the next day to go to class. I would switch out my passports, I would get in the car and we would go to school. And I wouldn't dare sharpen my pencil at school with a knife, partly because I don't think those are allowed, but I wouldn't sharpen them in the grooves of scissors either. In fear of the ridicule that I would receive from my third grade peers. Kids can be mean sometimes. And I just remember the switch. 
it was a personal struggle that it was developing. And it was at times like this, and there were many times like this in my life growing up in the multicultural home where I felt a dichotomy arising. It, was, it became an intrinsic and innate behavior to switch my identity on and off depending on the groups I was surrounded by. It reached its zenith when I was in college. I was in an argument with a young gentleman who shall remain nameless. And I remember being so frustrated. I don't know how the argument began, but I will never forget how it ended. I found myself at the peak proclaiming, I'm Trinidadian. Roti, Pallori, Sorrel, Mobi, those are my foods. When I'm sad and I want to be lifted, I listen to soca music. When I want to think of home and memories, I hear my grandparents quarreling in their sing-songy accent. How dare he take this from me? But at the same time, dare I detest my American heritage? It afforded my family educational opportunities that allow me to be an atmospheric scientist today, that gave them financial prosperity. I was flustered, I was confused. I wasn't mad at him, I was mad at myself. At that point I realized, throughout this matriculation, this matriculation through his point in college, I realized that he wasn't gonna understand. And I knew that at this point in my journey on self-identity, I could not explain or articulate. But today I can tell you with a surety that as a first generation American, our identity doesn't have a point of origin nor is it traveling to any particular destination, but rather, we must find solace and stability in a transitory state. We are swinging pendulums between two worlds, harboring two cultures within us. We get the opportunity to be ambassadors and translators. If you were to ask me today, Samara McEachern Theodore, what are you? I would say, I'm a real Trini who was born in Los Angeles. Thank you. <laughs>